And welcome back to World Talks here on TVP World. And now it's time to bring in my guest tonight to discuss these developments in the European Parliament as well as at the Republican National Convention and the new vice presidential pick by candidate Donald Trump. Joining me now is Ivana Stradner, a research fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Hello and thank you for joining me tonight on TVP World. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yes, now we've seen earlier this year Europe actually scrambling to get defense, um, you know, to get to meet their defense requirements under a potential Trump administration. Um, recent events have also indicated that that could be very likely. Um, but at the same time, we have somewhat of a shocker because you hear the uh, kind of key word phrase, as long as it takes, and now Germany is cutting its military spending um, or uh, military aid to Ukraine by half uh, next year. So what do you make of this? Is this in anticipation of a, of a Trump administration and just a political negotiation tactic when that time comes? So to begin with, just a month ago, we experienced in the European Parliament a large, I don't want to say a large, but certainly a winning of certain far-right groups. So uh, this resolution in particular uh, um, should is a step in the right direction that even with those groups, the European Union is willing, um, uh, at least in words, to help Ukraine. But words are words, facts are facts. And I'm so glad that you mentioned uh, one of the statements there, a claim, you know, to provide military support to Ukraine for as long uh, as it is necessary uh, and as long as Ukraine needs. No, that's not the right approach. The approach should be um, um, as long as Ukraine uh, wins. Uh, unfortunately, it seems to me that on both sides of the ocean, um, there is no such a strong statement, uh, either in the United States or coming in the European Union, in part because they fear escalation uh, with, with Russia. Uh, we are thinking in the West, tactically about the war in Ukraine, Russia is thinking strategically. And that's one of the key problems, why we are where we are. Uh, I do believe that there are certain movements also here in the United States, uh, but probably also in the European Union that are trying to push Ukraine to sit on a table uh, with Russia and start negotiation, except for the fact that Putin does not want to negotiate. Uh, and we have to understand that for Putin, this is strategic strategically important war. It doesn't matter for him whether he is going to win in 2024 or 10 years from now. What he is going to use that alleged, you know, uh, uh, negotiations is to actually buy more time to rebuild his military and to continue with his uh, with his actions. And make no mistake, the war in Ukraine is not going to stay in Ukraine. Even with negotiations, Putin is just going to buy more time. And that's something that worries me very much on both sides of, of the ocean. And in the European Union, particularly, you just mentioned Germany or even like France, people do indeed uh, fear escalations, except for the fact fact that Russia is already in a hybrid war against uh, the West. But I'm afraid, you know, that not many people understand that. Right. Well, you just raised several uh, great points I want to talk about. So, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that J.D. Vance says is a problem here is that the strategic goals have not been defined um, as in terms of Ukraine. What does victory look like? Um, I've spoken with several experts uh, in various fields, from military men um, to politicians. And it seems to me that the politicians haven't made up um, their minds yet. Now, the potential, let me get to my question here. The potential that uh, Donald Trump uh, wins the election. He comes in, he makes uh, Ukraine sit down at the table. But if we listen to what he said during the debate, he said that both sides will have to negotiate in good faith. And I think we can make the assumption that um, Russia will not live up to that. So is there a potential that Donald Trump could, in fact, support Ukraine even more to a further extent than the Biden administration is currently doing? 
Uh, make no mistake, the Biden administration um, has also been uh, weak on Ukraine. Uh, I'm sitting here in Washington, D.C., and we should have delivered uh, all long-range missiles a long time ago. But the administration apparently feared escalation, and when, in fact, uh, that's exactly uh, what prompted uh, Vladimir Putin uh, to continue you know, with, his, with his approach. When it comes to... Uh, 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 when it comes to Trump's pick for uh, his uh, 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 for events, it did not also come as a surprise due to you know uh, domestic uh, situation here. And Vance has been one of those people who certainly has not supported uh, Ukraine uh, from the beginning. But we also have to wait because not he didn't uh, support Trump either. <laughs> Indeed. And not all, you know, foreign policy will be in his power. That's why I firmly believe, you know, even if Trump wins, we have to wait to see, you know, who is going to, in addition to his running mate, like who are going to be other other people uh, in, in, in the government. You know, Trump is a very unpredictable person. Uh, he's saying one thing, he's doing something else. Uh, he also delivered, you know, weapons uh, uh, to Ukraine. Uh, uh, he's the first during, president you know, to do so, yeah. Exactly. So we have to, we have to, we should not panic. However, I do want to emphasize one important thing is that Trump has to understand that negotiation in good faith with Moscow will not be possible because Putin has set his goals very, very clearly. He is also, as I mentioned, in a hybrid war against the West. I mean, just the Polish intelligence, but also from the Baltic states have mentioned multiple times uh, Putin's uh, efforts and threats uh, coming to your part of, of, of the world. Uh, also what's happening in the West in terms of sabotage, et cetera. So we are in some sort of hybrid war against uh, Russia. I do believe that the Kremlin, in case of negotiation, is just going to uh, buy more time uh, to strengthen its military and to continue uh, with, with the war uh, in, in Ukraine. And that's something that we have to really bear in mind because, look, uh, we cannot win this war until we understand how Putin thinks. And his thinking about this war is strategic, and we are thinking tactically and operationally, which is exactly a dream come true uh, for Russia. Well, and us in democracies and having free and fair elections, we choose sometimes different leaders quite frequently in comparison uh, to Russia. So that could slightly put us at a disadvantage in, in, in terms of, of the long game. Uh, but I'd like to ask you if, uh, if, if there's something more to um, the approach of, of the United States having to really focus on China and Europe having to focus on Russia and its own security here. Uh, irregardless of who wins the elections in the United States, is this, is this something that we're going to see coming out of potentially both parties? So. Uh, in my view, uh, the Trump administration priority is certainly uh, China. But this is where the Trump administration would be mistaken to think like that, because we cannot distinguish uh, the threat coming from Russia and China, because this is an axis of evil that is certainly coming from all sides, whether China, uh, Iran, uh, North Korea. It's the part of the same strategy. Until we understand that through such a perspective, uh, we are doomed to fail. Uh, because China is learning very, very fast uh, from Russia uh, how threats operate, and they're also testing our red line. So that's precisely why it is tremendously important to connect the dots and to perceive uh, Russia and China as part of the same threat uh, attacking uh, the West. Certainly, I would love to see uh, uh, the EU and other European countries more involved uh, when it comes to countering both Russia and China, it's going to be a massive threat, whether, you know, massive threat, whether uh, it's Biden, whether it's Trump administration, how we are going to cooperate uh, together. Right. Ivana, let's concentrate on Europe first, because Russia is not that far away. Um, Ivana Stradner, research fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, I thank you very much for joining me tonight and discussing this. Thank you. Thank you very much for me. And that concludes this edition of World Talks. Thanks for joining us and stay with us for more here on TVP World.